Welcome, Peg Fu. A what? The first and only podcast about people eating stuff. I'm Mike Lisk. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of Egg Fu. What? Young Michael, uh, I wish everybody could have seen a minute ago when you turned around and went back, turned around and walked back to turn off the on air sign. Uh huh. I'm reminded of the very first video I ever made for Xmas time. Back in, I guess, 2006 or eight. I don't know if you super fans remember. You probably do. Uh-huh. Uh, it was me talking off screen. And then when I get up, there's a surprise when I go up by and walk through the door. <laughs> Did I show ass? If you remember. Oh, you do remember. <laughs> and uh, I got a little racy, people. That's all I'm saying. You could see my buttocks. I thought I still had some coverage. So when you got up, I thought, oh, is, is Mike doing uh, an homage to me? <laughs> But I know I did. I saw no none of none of those famous Mike Lisk glutes. Uh, uh-huh. Mike, how was your week? Uh, okay, not bad. Um, I finally uh, got an appointment with uh, a new primary care doctor. Good. And this was uh, he he'd been my father's doctor. I liked him. And the weird thing is, and maybe this is something uh, people can use some advice. The first time I called this office, uh, I was promptly turned down. We're not taking new patients. It's like calling the suicide prevention hotline and being put on hold. Like <laughs> calling a doctor and they're like, right. yeah, you know what? No, thanks. Right. Yeah. And 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 I called another doctor. Same thing. So uh, mm. when I call my doctor now, um, they said that there was a not when they said I, you know, they weren't taking any more patients. They said that, I guess they have nurse practitioners. This is something new to me. Uh, and I mm-hmm. guess uh, I could have gotten an appointment with them. So the second time I called, mm-hmm. I asked for the doctor just on a whim, you know. And sure enough, I, I got an appointment with the doctor. So <laughs> I guess it all depends who you get, who picks up yeah. that phone. You know, maybe one person is saying no more patience and one person is saying, sure, come on, come one, come all. When is their big appointment? Well, I already had it. I had a Friday. Oh, how'd it go? Well, you know, the blood pressure is high. Um, I've been taking Mm -hmm. medication for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, It actually went down over the time I was there. They took it twice. It turns out, and, and what are the odds of this happening? And, you know, it never came up when I, I, you know, saw the doctor with my father. Mm -hmm. He's from Bayonne. Shut up. He's a Bayonne guy. (laughs) I knew knew there was something about this guy I liked. He's a Bayonne guy. A a doctor? Was he better than you? I mean, come on. (laughs) A doctor? That ain't Jersey. No, he's, he's a Bayonne guy. He actually, his family, you know, was right in my neighborhood, like three blocks away. I mean, he's been out of bay on a while, but he still has some family there. Mm-hmm. And of course, we went down uh, Bayonne memory lane. Oh, as we want some, to do. Throwing out some addresses. And <laughs> and uh, we had a nice little meeting. Uh, and, you know, he said he met a uh, patient. I, I keep wanting to call patients customers. They are customers, right? <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> he met a previous customer the week before, also from Bayonne. So, uh mm. His parting words to me are, uh, Bayonne's taken over, and I can't disagree. Sounds like sounds like someone is smitten. <laughs> yeah, well, nice guy. Good. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, I don't weigh myself on a regular basis. Uh, you know, I kind of know how I feel. I go up and down. I just don't want to be, you know, obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I got on that scale this week, uh, I did not like the number. <laughs> really? No, I didn't like it. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have the guts. I didn't have the guts, or even mm. you know, my savvy promotional uh, instinct mm. to mention that I've been doing a podcast eating Chinese food every week. <laughs> would have been nice. <laughs> would have been good for the show, Mike. Yeah, it would have been good. You know, a professional uh, spreading the word, maybe. Young professional from Bayonne. Chinese takeout aficionados. See, see, that's why I like. I haven't been to my doctor in over a year. Mm-hmm. And I've been I've gotten pretty good at always having something on the books, but then now I'm like, 
you know, it's been a while. Like, I don't want to have to step on that scale. Yeah. I'm going to be, plus it's like, she's going to be like, uh, you haven't had a drink for three years. How are you still fat as shit? Like, what is, <laughs> how's that possible? Uh-huh. So I'm, uh-huh. you know, not looking forward to that, but uh, let me be inspired by you to get my ass back in gear and mm-hmm. go see my doctor too. Uh, so other than the blood pressure, you feel like everything's okay or? Well, uh, I'm going in this week for uh, blood tests and uh, I mean, they gave me, he gave me my usual prescription, but then he gave me something else. He, he thought this might be a good supplement. And then I read the instructions and what, what it's good for. And this is a medication good for uh, people who are recovering from a heart attack. I'm like, okay. Oh, that's <laughs> See, flattering. <he's, laughs> message received. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All Maybe right. I should start reconsidering uh, what this podcast is about until I get things under control here. Um we'll be doing maybe we'll get creative you know a weekly dish mm. I, th- I think we've established ourselves mm-hmm. as uh you know we can we can do other things all right but um well. and then you know in the same week uh i had a proustian moment we haven't talked about proust lately Ooh, <laughs> you're scratching me where i itch. <laughs> I was strolling past the refrigerated meat section. And, you know, I had been talking about Taylor Ham a couple of weeks oh, ago, right? <laughs> I saw a commercial. I think a couple of YouTube things popped up, probably because we were talking about it. <laughs> really? That's amazing, isn't it? The yeah. way you talk about something and then the ads pop up. Science. <laughs> but anyway, I'm strolling by and I haven't seen... When I was young, when my mother was making Taylor ham for us, um, it didn't come in the little sliced, pre-sliced boxes. Mm-hmm. And that's what I see all the time. I haven't seen, and here it Back is. Back in your day, you had to slice the loaf up yourself. Take a gander. These kids don't know. It came in a little cloth sack. Yeah. That's a real thing. That's, that's from Valley Forge right there, right? <laughs> Valley Forge. That's from Valley Forge. No, nothing on the back. Boy. Taylor. Yeah, it doesn't say ham. Yeah. Just Taylor the brand. It's a brand of pork roll. Don't need to say ham. Don't for need those to be pe- Yeah, for people still confused, it is pork roll, but mm-hmm. it's a brand of pork roll. Mm-hmm. And it's, I, to me, it's the best brand. Um, So I had this little moment. I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. Had a little flashback to the past, so I had to buy it. Mm-hmm. So I get it home. A couple days later, I I'm slicing it up, and something's wrong. Uh oh! Doesn't feel right slicing it. Mm-mm. Did they change the recipe? Because no, this, sir. I no, my sir. memory, my Proustian, yeah, memory is that it was a little harder. You know, mm-hmm. you had to press down firmly. Well, that was life, Mike. That was life back then. <laughs> a little harder. Not as not as hard as say a hard salami. Is but, this is this a is, is this a working metaphor you got cooking for life? <laughs> it's a little harder back. Well, then. it's it's maybe just maybe my mem- memory is different. I, I'm I you know, it just felt softer, mm-hmm. and I'm like, ooh, is it, did they change the recipe now? I'm a, I've got all these questions floating through my mind. Is this going to be as good as I remembered? Mm-hmm. Um, it was okay, but uh, it was a little different. I have to admit. Hmm. So you think I, I changed it, or you probably changed your taste buds, or your. No, I think they probably changed it. You know. Hmm. Um, yeah, blame them. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, it was a feel. You know, as soon as I started cutting it, it was it just like went through almost like butter. I'm like, that's not right. That's not the way it was. Mm-mm. You mean, like my... to earn your Taylor ham. You don't want to just melt. Yeah, your mouth. you had to like bear down on it. Uh, you know, and anybody so... can just have ham melt in their mouth. Yeah. You want to work for it a little bit, and then of course I I left it on too long. It scor- I think it, I think it cooked faster, mm-hmm. and uh, I scorched one one side. <laughs> Do you it slice still- it up and just cook the slices, or yeah, yeah, I fry it. Yeah. You know, it just occurred to me now I could have could have thrown them in the air fryer. That would be an interesting experiment. <laughs> still having fun with that air fryer. You got to get one. Left. <laughs> 
Yeah, I still do. But uh, yeah, no, it was a nice, it was still good. Yeah. But uh, after the doctor's appointment, I think I'm going to lay off the Taylor ham after this. I had my, had my little stroll down memory lane, mm. uh, but I, I'm not going to continue. Mm. Health nut. <laughs> Speaking of health nuts, uh, lots of people are clamoring for you to take this uh, Wegmans pizza challenge. Uh, what are you thinking? I think the people have spoken. <laughs> I think I'm ready for this challenge, except I do have a lunch on Friday okay. that I've committed to. Okay. So I think I plan would be to start start it right after that lunch. Okay. I mean, it's the one time in like eight years I've had lunch plans. Just for the record, uh, I'm I'm one of the uh, uh, naysayers. I, I, I you know I want you to be healthy and thrive. Well, these people don't care. They don't <laughs> want me to be healthy. They just want me to you know almost kill myself. Uh -huh. one, one week, so I'm gonna for 168 hours. I'm going to only eat Wegman's pizza, <laughs> starting Friday afternoon. Now, how often will you eat it? I mean. I'm old now, and uh, I don't need three meals a day. I mean, if I have two, that's kind of the average. I mean, I think if I do about four pieces a day, you know, probably two for lunch, I'll come home, I'll be like, oh, I'll just have one for dinner, and then <laughs> some point after dinner, I'll sneak into that fourth one. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. So that's probably, I figure four a day, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, which will actually be healthier. It'll be fewer calories than I would mm. normally be eating. <laughs> now, do uh, they give you uh, offerings of toppings or they just put out whatever they have and you got to take it, whatever they put out there? Yeah, well, no, it's it's run by human beings for other human beings. <laughs> I, so uh, they let you choose your toppings, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, I can get what I want. I could uh, I could order a pizza, have them make it for me. I oh, just... I, I thought maybe this was a thing where, you know, they're in those uh, triangular boxes and under oh, the lights. Are. Are... You can go up and grab a slice of whatever's mm -hmm. hanging around, or you can order a whole pizza yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll probably start out grabbing a pepperoni slice here or there and mm -hmm. see what happens. Okay. Uh, Is that your favorite? I like the pepperoni and sausage. Mm -hmm. But the pizza at Wegmans is really good. Mm-hmm. Now it's weird that it's four dollars no matter what. Like if you get a regular cheese slice, four dollars. If you get the Parmesan truffles with buffalo chicken, still four dollars. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know how the laws of mathematics seem to cease to exist at a Costco pizza section, but that's all right with me. Uh you know, I mean, a week's a long time, but I'm kind of looking forward to uh, seeing if I can pull this off. You like a good buffalo chicken pizza. I resisted th that. Uh... No, 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 I don't. I don't oh, you don't? It. Oh, okay. I don't love it. It's got a ranch on it or yeah. cheese or... I was oh. resistant for many years. A friend of mine talked me into it. Which one has blue cheese on it? Uh, I think that might be the one. That's buffalo cheese. Yeah, it's, I don't like blue cheese, so... Yeah. It, yeah. Now what 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 how are you putting my odds for getting through this? Like I said, you can call it off anytime. Don't feel any pressure to do this. If you're not feeling well, um yeah. Yeah, you're on the record saying that. Get but yourself a salad. <laughs> by by Monday morning, I'm gonna be getting threatening emails. <laughs> you better not quit with the pizza thing. You better not fuck this up for me. No, I I gotta, voicemails. I gotta keep you fit and hearty. So. Well, the people have spoken, <laughs> so I'm going to honor it and see, uh, see how far I can go. Okay. There's worse things to be eating than pizza. So. I had a uh, I had, Sunday we gathered for the football, the championship games at my friend's house. We do this for the Giants all season, and now we're extending not, it. Not in the playoffs. <laughs> Thank you. Playoffs? Uh no, no playoffs for the Giants this year. But about uh, playoffs. <laughs> but we're keeping it going. And uh so we gathered last week and um 
we usually order a pizza after the first game. We 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 watched. We didn't watch both games. We watched one and a half game. Mm -hmm. But uh, so we ordered uh, a meat lovers pizza. <laughs> you know my and problem with meat lovers. The ham. Two problems. The ham. Ham. The bacon. Ham and bacon. Yeah. That's that kind of surprised me when I when I when I gave the thumbs up to the, to that being what we're ordering. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it through. I didn't think about the ham. I never think of ham on pizza. <laughs> the ham is always like I'm like who wants this? <laughs> it's always like all right, it's kind of tossed on with the meat lovers, but I've never heard anybody ordering ham on their pizza. I mean, look, never mind the whole Hawaiian pizza thing. That's a whole separate. <laughs> no, I'm with but you on I've that. Never, have you you're, ever heard you're anybody that, ordering right? ham? You're against pineapples. You're against pineapples. Sorry? You're against the pineapples on the pizza? No. One thing we learned over the course of this is I love pineapples and food. So remember, I liked it in my in that fried rice. Oh, no. I like pineapples, but I, I draw the line with pizza. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. I find it hard to believe I would like it on pizza. But as a newfound pineapple lover, I don't want to turn my nose up at it. until I, I tried it. it. I tried it. You know. Did you? Yeah. It's a weird. It's It's off for me. Mm. You know, yeah. maybe it's I'm just not used to it. Could be that, but um, some yeah. Sometimes out at Wegmans they'll have it sitting out there. People are getting slices, I guess. So okay, I still oh. want to try it, but I've never heard anybody ordering ham on their pizza outside of the meat lovers. Uh huh. Right? Have you? Uh, no. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. But man. isn't there a, a pineapple and ham? Is, isn't that that's a the thing? Hawaiian thing? That's yeah, the, yeah. That's the yeah. famous yeah. Maybe I'll try that since I'm eating pizza all week anyway. So I might as well mix it up, right? <laughs> well, get my, there you go. I mean, get my healthy, might as well try all the well. varieties. Yeah, there you go. You know what? That's a good point. Yeah. I I, I hadn't thought of that. I was thinking about slogging it through with just like pepperoni all week. But why not? If I have to eat pizza every day anyway, I might as well make it interesting, right? Yeah. Well, will there Pineapple be... and sausage. And most importantly, will there be viral videos coming forthcoming for each uh, <laughs> each meal? <laughs> no, just that, one, just one, one video a day. Yes, would, that's would, what Mike wants. Would be sufficient. One video. That's a day. what one, Mike gets. One video is sufficient. It's never enough for you. I'd <laughs> like the video I made of uh, with the intro last week. That's pretty funny, huh? Yeah, speed it up. Yeah, you were slow. I was fast. <laughs> pretty funny, huh? <laughs> I didn't watch it all. Oh God! Damn. <laughs> I'm like you're constantly badgering me to make videos, and then oh, I'm not. I don't watch. All right, yeah, um, but then people might see that video and and like, what's wrong with their voices when they finally see a real video? They'll, they'll, Do I just stay away from funny gag videos? They'll be disappointed. Okay. No what was more? the tech? What was the tech on that? You you can you can do sep you can separate the uh, the voices. That I mean, that's pretty savvy. Right. You have enough going on in that pretty little head of yours. <laughs> Don't worry about how I did it. Mm -hmm. You just make sure to yell at me to get more shit out there. That's all. <laughs> uh -huh. You just make sure I'm aware I'm not doing enough for you. <laughs> That's all. Uh -huh. Can we can we talk about something real quick? Yeah, sure. This fucking weather. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it just snowing a week ago? Yeah. And then it was 70 degrees. It's like 50 something. And if I have one more motherfucker look at me go, can you believe this weather? And they're so happy. And I have to grit my teeth and be like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Jan end of January, 70 degrees. Yeah, can no, I'm all, I'm all for it. I'll take a, a week of winter and, and then back to. Uh... Let's get on with spring. But I mean, oh, you know, the we, 50 we, hot weeks of the year aren't enough for you. We still have February and sometimes the early weeks of March can surprise us. So can you believe this weather? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you have to nod your head because if, if you say you don't love it being 80 degrees every day, they think you're a fucking psycho or something. So no, they think you're a child. Because once you once you <laughs> Does children like cold weather? Yeah, they they want the snow. They want this the snow days. They want a day off from school is what they want. I don't even need a day off. I just mm -hmm. want some nice cold, snowy weather. It's winter. Yeah. It's hot all year round. You 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 need the snow. 
you obviously don't have to shovel anything. What, what do you, no. you don't have to clean a car. No, <laughs> no. So you're spoiled. You're spoiled with winter. You know, you don't have the hardships of winter. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I have a different car that I'm driving now. And, and one thing I hated about my other car, I mean, I had it a long time. I had it 20 years, over 20 years or whatever. But it would just glaze up with like sheer ice. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, you'd have to chip away. <laughs> So now like, the rest of us have to suffer through heat for the next hundred years because because you have a ni nicer car. And that, that, well, but no, it's 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 the same thing with the windshield, though. I mean, it's I don't know. This is something that has to be invented glass that doesn't turn into a sheet of ice. You know, are you the, proposing the, I invent something too? I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Got to make maybe. videos now. I got to invent I, uh, glass maybe. that's nice over. But um, have you invented that already? I think so. Like, why do they even need to salt roads? Why, every time they've had to repave a road in the last 50 years, why haven't they just thrown salt shit in it mm -hmm. while they're repaving it? I see what you're saying. Like little speckles? Yeah. Permanent salt in the... In the um, yeah. I, I think maybe the uh, concrete would not adhere. The tar would not, would break up if there was salt in the mix. I knew you'd take their side, Mike, you know. Uh, if you, you know, the actual physics for this. This comment. <laughs> I knew you'd take I'm, their side. I'm Mike. sure. You know, I know. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure. Yeah. Somebody might have thought of it in the past, or maybe they haven't. And now every engineer in the world is going to be like, "Wait, what? Fuck! Why did uh, I think of that?" Yeah. It's like the second those the suitcase with the wheels came out, everybody's like, "God damn it! Why did I think of that?" Permanently salted roads. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting I idea. Like that, I don't like that tone, Mike. Sounds like you're placating me. <laughs> I'm I'm humoring you. So I continued uh, with my uh, deep dive into REM that we oh. talked about. We talked about that last week. I didn't know we were continuing. Well, I sent you an email, but uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you missed it. Like the entire <laughs> video, I spent hours making and sent to you. So you so on last week's show, we discussed mostly the. Uh, the Bill Burry era, mm -hmm. uh, although we did get to the first uh, post Bill Burry era album up. So I started from there, mm -hmm. and uh, then listened to, and I and I I hadn't even heard any of these before. Uh, Reveal, Reveal, Around the Sun, Accelerate, Collapse into Now, and also two live albums. REM Live and Live at the Olympia, which is actually a double disc. I only I only listened to the first one, but I'm going to go back. I mean, they're playing lots of early songs. Yeah, uh, these were from these were shows they did it in uh, Ireland, Dublin, the Olympia, and uh, I mean they keep calling it a rehearsal, but I mean they don't stop in the middle of the songs. I mean the songs are performed <laughs> throughout. Yeah. And um, they're really, really good. Um, I'll say this about the post Bill Berry era: these, there's not, these aren't bad records. Yeah, you know. Um, but I can't say there's any too many songs that stand out to me, mm -hmm. like in the earlier era. Uh, I think "Imitation of Life" on Reveal kind of popped out. And and you see them sort of struggling because up was kind of yeah they were they were really trying something new, it didn't really click with people, All right? So then they're kind of I guess trying to get back to the original sound. I mean, reveal and uh, around the sun, yeah, they, those were kind of I would say uh, of of the studios those were the toughest listens. I just remember everything was a little like soft and. Uh, yeah, which may explain how they sort of uh, redirect uh, on Accelerate and even into into uh, Collapse into Now. I think Accelerate's uh, the one I like from Yeah, Yeah, it, it's a harder rock sound. Yeah, it definitely rocked more, yeah. And then they, they sort of went with that. They kept it up with, 
with uh, Collapse Into Now and the live album from Olympia is pretty rocking. Uh, I even went back and listened to, I saw people and yourself uh, offering up, you know, Green, which I went back. I re-listened to it. I, I, I re-listened to your favorite, uh, Life's... Life's Rich Pageant? Life's Rich Pageant, yeah. Blanked out there. That's well, pretty hard. My favorite. Life's Rich Pageant is pretty hard rocking. Yeah. Is that what you like about it ab above the earlier ones? Well, it's part of what I like about it. It's 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 very much more. I mean, parts partly why they got uh, Don. Uh, what's his name? Gelman, producer. He had done uh, Melon Camp, mm -hmm. but they were definitely going for a more straight up rock thing yeah. anyway. Yeah. And, I, and so right away, that prob was probably a little more my alley. Mm -hmm. uh, and plus, I just think the songs are just really great. You know, mm -hmm. straight up, you can kind of start to hear what he's singing about, even though it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's the most straightforward rocking album mm -hmm. of theirs that I love. Um, but yeah, yeah, I always felt like anything after once Bill Barry left, it kind of meandered into like soft, wispy. You just kind of tell that you're just kind of feeling around. It's never landed anything for me. So, mm -hmm. but I tell you what, that live show you posted that you had gone to. That was fantastic. It was. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing they they had it. I mean, I, I mean, it, like I said, it was shot for MTV. So, you know, I'm I'm glad it floated out. You know that it's still out there. And yeah, once I started watching that, I couldn't stop. I'm like, wow, this is phenomenal. Great set list. I mean, it's almost perfect time to see them. Yeah, right they're after young, Reckoning came rocking. out. Yeah, great set list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that's. Uh, but I, I only spent about nine or ten hours scouring the tape looking for you. <laughs> Were you able to find yourself? No. Uh, I mean, some of the shots of the audience, I mean, I'm like, wow, there's some real geeks in this. <laughs> uh -oh. Is that what I looked like back then? No, I'm you like, look cool, Mike. I'm like, I'm like, I hope I don't show up in this crowd. <laughs> what if you what if you do and you spot yourself and you're just like the king of the beach? <laughs> you surround well, about these nerds. And it turns you just stand there. You got your ripped T-shirt, <laughs> coconut oil on the bod. Well, you yeah, forgot, you forgot. June, you're like, God damn, I forgot how cool and sexy I was back June then. June '84 would have been right about the time I graduated from college, so I think I had a pretty, you know, good hair at the time. Mm -hmm. Still dark, you know. That was <laughs> was it flowing past your shoulders when we? No, found no, you not crowd? long, not long. Just a, a good full head of hair. Are you are you in a leather jacket with no shirt? <laughs> no. Oh. no, that wasn't my look. But uh... Uh, we got to find you in that video. <laughs> what they? Oh, a duster. Duster. <laughs> you were in a long leather duster with no shirt on. Yeah. Well, You're the flowing duster... locks going past your shoulders. I think the duster has uh, lost its luster after Columbine, right? Shall we oh, say? You're a poet now. Okay. <laughs> Not a poet. When I think of a duster. I Just think pointing out that the duster lost its coolness. Because well, I, of think of, I think of that. I think of Rob McElhaney, that guy from uh, that's always sunny in Philadelphia. Rob McElhaney, he always wears one. Does he really? Yeah, they look disgusting. They do <laughs> seem like if if you're wearing someone's walking up in one of those, you can just assume major douchebag. Like <laughs> nobody comes uh -huh. walking up in one of those things, and somebody else thinks hey, I should leave my kids with this person for an hour. They'll be uh -huh. fine. That never happens. Did you ever buy an item of clothing and then like really never have the guts to wear it? Mm, the guts? What do you mean the guts? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, like a wedding dress. What do you, you know? Mean? I grew I grew up in no, I grew up in the hippie era, so you know, like head shops would pop up and sort of like hippie hippie clothing, you know, like uh, cool cool hippie clothing places would open. Uh, and I remember I, I I bought this. It was a denim shirt, but it was like, you know, the classic. Uh, what's the guy who does the designs for the country artist? Nudie. Nudie. Uh, oh, the suit. nudie suits. Or... Yeah. With the lots of uh, embroidery, oh, God. The, the, the flowers. and stuff. I mean, it wasn't all over the shirt. It was just like in the back on your back. But, you know, I, I was enamored of the shirt when I saw it in this hippie shop and. I bought it. It wasn't cheap. 
but I never had the guts to wear it. <laughs> it just really, it just kind of lingered. It had, I you mean, still it was a nice have it. Shirt. You should wear it next week. No, <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think my mother eventually threw it out, but uh, it had like the you know, the pearl snap buttons. It was a nice shirt. Well, you know who wore, but I didn't think I was suit. worthy of the shirt. <laughs> I didn't think you I was who, cool enough. You know who wore those nudie suits or whatever uh, was on the monster tour. Speaking of REM, Mike Mills had always wear those big, oh, yeah? big nudie suits. Oh, okay. And you're right to not wear it because they look ridiculous. <laughs> I've well, never had only... anything, I don't think, that adventurous. Like I've always worn the exact, like you can pretty much guess. There's only been two pieces of clothing in my life I've been excited about. <laughs> Sixth grade, when I saved up to get some Ralph Sampson Pumas. Thank you, okay. Sears and Roba. All right. And about four or five years ago, I got into my head. I've never had a cool jacket. Mm -hmm. And I got in my head, I wanted a London fog coat. Oh, yeah. We, we've discussed this London fog. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Should I shut up? No, no. But I'm just saying... Uh, we we remember when we talked about whether we would call it a raincoat or an overcoat, right? Uh, yeah. Remember that discussion? Well, it doesn't matter because it's been in storage for like four years. I got to wear it like <laughs> once. No, number one, it was like 70% off, so it's a steal to begin with. Okay. Got to wear it once. It was amazing. I looked incredible. Uh -huh. And then two days later, it, it was, all of a sudden, it's 100 degrees again. And then here we are. You know, a lot of my shit's been in storage because of COVID and everything. So I've got to wear it like once in four or five fucking years. Where did you get it? Hay Bands? Hay Bands? <laughs> Was it the name of a barn? <laughs> you don't know Hay Bands? What is Hay Bands? Is it's, that... a, it's a brand of men's clothing. So is that where the Cowboys it's and Bayonne do their shopping? Kind of square, Squaresville, you know? Uh, it was somewhere in Richmond. Just some mall or whatever. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. 70% off. The universe wants me to have this rocking London fog jacket or coat. <laughs> I haven't seen it since. Thank you, global fucking warming. How much are you paying for that storage space now? Because like the price goes up, doesn't it? Doesn't it go up? Isn't that how, that how they, they get your stuff? Why would it go up? I was just talking to somebody about this. Uh, I, I heard it's like it's cheap when you put it in, uh -huh. but, the, but the longer you keep it, that it, you know, the, the price starts going up. I mean, if they want my shit, good luck. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you about when I first moved here from from Richmond or whatever. Or no, from Brooklyn to whatever. I had to put a bunch of my shit in storage. And like, I thought I'd set up automatic payments. Mm -hmm. Like 10 months later, uh, they call me up or an email, whatever. Oh, uh, you haven't paid for your storage space in 10 months. If you don't pay by, you know, whatever, next week, we're going to auction off all your stuff. And of course, I was outraged. I was like, what the fuck? I, I've been... and then I started laughing. I'm like, can I pull up a chair and watch you try to auction off <laughs> my like $7 worth of shit that nobody ever is going to want to touch? <laughs> What's it like? Like how many unused T-shirts or, you know, uh, albums? Uh, sitting there and books. Yeah, how much are they gonna go for? So it's mostly albums and books. Albums, books, and clothes. That's pretty much all I own. So, uh -huh. so I don't know if that's a thing they do to try to rip you off. Like, oh, uh, but yeah, so like, I'm saying, and it's I've been paying like 130 bucks a month for like uh, three years now. Two, wow. three. Years. Yeah, that's a lot of money. A lot of money, bro. Got to get so it out of there. <laughs> but like you say. Shut the hell up and keep pushing out content. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, my 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 London fog coat. London fog coat. I I did get to wear my Ralph Sam my Pumas, Ralph Sampson Pumas though. So, rock those. Yeah, I imagine I imagine those uh, high price sneakers are you know. That was thirty two dollars. Young men's first, uh, yeah, first major purchase for clothing. That was uh, accessories. So I had to save up for a couple. I think it was thirty-two dollars, and that's in nineteen eighty-four, Skrilla. So you tell me. Uh huh. Um, I had a question this week, though. Is I noticed my two favorite Lou Reed albums are the first Velvet Underground album, 
and New York. Yeah. To me, those are easily his two best records. And they're 22 years apart. Is that the longest a great artist has gone between their two best records? I saw this tweet and I'm I'm like, here we go again. Oh, I'm sorry, my God. It's just <laughs> I don't uh, know if you're doing this on purpose to get a rise out of Twitter, which is fine. You know, you 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 got some no. some you got you got some feedback who, you know. I I think I even gave you some uh I said, man, you, you need to have you been following Lou Reed his whole career and and, and you've determined that or you've had yes. lulls where you, you didn't really listen to any of his stuff, which is you know, I, I can well, understand that. He, getting, getting getting through his career can be a slog. Oh, it's it's up and up and down. You up know? And down. I mean every album has like one great song, mm -hmm. then like eight shitty songs. I mean, uh, I was a pretty consistent fan up until Mistrial. Yeah. I don't know if you know that record. Mm. Uh that that album, I think it was a one-two punch. Uh and grown up in public was a little like felt like uh, middle of the road to me. I'd have to listen to it again. It just yeah. seemed like oh he's done rocking. He's just gonna sort of write these kind of middle of the road songs. They just feel like uh every once in a while lose like here's some shit I I did. Then just slaps his name on it. Just seems very, you know, I don't want to say uninspired, but but then he'd put then it always had like one song. So you're like, well, it's obviously there's something there, but No, I but, thought he had had a very strong run in the uh early eighties with blue uh, the blue mask. I like new sensations. Legendary Hearts and New Sensations. That yeah. that that three album run. Yeah, he's got a great band. Yeah, Robert. Not Clinton. as good as New York. I don't know. I mean, it's all, there's just there, there's no consistency up until New York, right? No, I disagree. I, I I think I just named three three records that are consistently good. I think they're pretty good. I don't think they're as good as New York. You think they're as good as New York? Yeah, I do. Think about think about your answer before you answer mine. I'm gonna ask you again. I just told you. Yeah. Do you think either one, any of those, is as good as New York? I, I was very high in the, those records, and I think I, I probably, I probably pay, played that. I like New York. I don't think it's a take a bad, minute if you need to think about your answer. But I, I, I played those three records more than I probably played New York. All right, so we'll agree that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> What's another example of an artist going that long between like great albums? I mean, you know, I, I was, I was, you know, I listened to REM. I'm thinking, you know, they're fairly consistent. You know, th those post Bill Berry albums may not grab you the way the early ones do, yeah. but they're not bad records. I mean, Neil Young, you know, the '80s were a weird. Don't get me started. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, Bob Dylan. You know, these are artists. You know, I like, but they have periods where i got off the boat for a while you know bob dylan had his uh born again period and i liked uh the first one what's the first one called i mean would you say bruce was like that i mean when Low the train coming? came out that was like 20 years after his well that's not true now bruce you know like with, with bruce i took a his... took a break with uh when he went solo when he when he did those two records and they were kind of disappointing uh, without the E Street Band. I think they're like Westerberg solo mono thing. If you put them together, took the best and made one album, I think it'd be pretty great. Yeah, I think we've had this discussion before. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I'm boring. You. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm I'm just having a flashback. I, mean, I was struck by it. I'm having a flashback to uh, Williamsburg and. The turkey's nest. Oh, that's a good memory. <laughs> yeah, they are good memories. But the, actually, that touches on something I was thinking of. I was getting a little, I don't want to say depressed, but bummed. Because uh, I was, because it's, number one, it's the 25th anniversary of when The Sopranos started. And Kirby Enthusiasm has ended, is ending after mm -hmm. 25 years. Right. So it got me thinking about 25 years ago. I had just moved to Brooklyn the year before. And I look back at that time and I have this idyllic memory of 100 Metro 
We're having the dinner parties. Mm -hmm. We're having band practices there. People just showing up and we're having fun. But is it weird? Like, but it's also hard to define the era. Is it hard to define an era like when you're not in school? Like there's not years just defined by certain things. Uh I don't know. I don't know if any I, I, I think I think I may be in that phase now. I'm in the phase yeah. now. You're still a young buck. Thank you. <laughs> Compared to me. But with me, you know, now it's it's uh yeah, it's it's sort of there's certain sameness. Uh, I'm not getting out a whole lot. Uh, I don't, I'm not, yeah, I'm not seeing friends that often. I mean, you know, some friends who moved out of the area. So, and then you've got people dying regularly. Um, death in the news this week, Melanie, who may not mean much to you, I'm thinking. You know, I've never Mel heard of this person, but I saw her everywhere. Okay. She died. I don't know. I'd never heard of her, but. I saw a thousand people on Twitter, you know, upset right. she had died. So, well, her, she's mainly known for Brand New Key. Do you know that, that song at least? No, you don't even know How's that song. Go? I've got a brand new pair of rose skates. <laughs> sorry? You've got a brand new key. I'm <laughs> sorry, keep going. A little more. I don't have the lyrics here. Not a little bit. Anyway. Anyway, that song. Well, okay, she, I think I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, she's, you know, her voice is almost like a little girl's voice, you know, yeah. and she, she's talking about riding her bicycle, and uh, that came out in 1971. So I was 10 years old. I heard that on the radio. That's one of. There's like a few songs I remember hearing on the radio. Yeah. Little young Mike. Young Mike, and and then my mother would like joke when it would come on. Oh, that's Mike's song. You know, uh, Joy to the World by Three Dog Night was another one. Oh, uh, my song. <laughs> and uh, then there was Harry Chapin's Cat's Cradle. You know, that error. You know, the, the certain songs. Yeah, it's like just... when um, the, that song, uh, Megadeth song, Last Caress, would come on. My mother would go, that's Greg's song. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Wow, that's an interesting. That was on the radio a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd wow. Be like, I got something to say. I raped your mother today. She'd be laughing. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's Greg's song. What are you gonna do? <laughs> well, anyway, but yeah. So no, that but... song. Yeah. So brand new key was a you know a sort of uh, that song stood out. It's in movies all everywhere, right? And then that's what. Yeah, I'm sure it's been used. Right? I mean, it's it's you know I I looked on Spotify to see if it still has a life. It's got 37 million plays. Um, so people are still listening to it, obviously. I mean, her, her next most popular, uh, song is only like 9 million. Um, so I did a little Google search. A little Google search. You know, I, I, I didn't even realize she's from New Jersey. She was, she was born in, uh, Astoria, Queens, uh -huh. but then her family moved to Long Branch, New Jersey, which is not very far from where that I'm sounds, at now. Sounds like a come here. And um, that ain't Jersey. <laughs> it's Jersey. That's Jersey Shore, Long Branch. <clears throat> the windmill hot hot dog uh, stand uh, is a sort of a landmark there. I don't know if it's still there though. But anyway, there's a there's a food connection to this. Uh, see, there's there's a met, uh, method to my madness here. I see. I, I mean, my brain's not. <laughs> I'm not getting it. You're but... like, what is this guy going on about Melanie? He only liked one of her songs. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, people read sexual innuendo into the song and it, it, it's not intentional. She was, you know, uh, but, uh, I learned that she wrote this song. She, she was into fasting. Um, she would fast for 27 days on water. What? You think you're a hero doing this Wegman challenge. <laughs> that I haven't even done yet. <laughs> Which I haven't even done yet. That I'm already debating on quitting. You know, like... But in an interview, she said, I broke the fast and went back to my life living in New Jersey. And we were going to a flea market. That's Jersey. That's Jersey. Around six in the morning. Around six. That's Jersey. <laughs> six in the morning. On the way back, I had just broken the fast. 
from the flea market. We passed with, a McDonald's. With Taylor, with Taylor pork roll? <laughs> no, no. It's it's going to be your place. So on the way back from the flea market, they pass a McDonald's, and the the aroma just hit her. Uh, she had been a vegetarian before the fast. So we pulled into the McDonald's oh, and got the whole works. The burger, wow. the shake, the fries. <laughs> and she was a vegetarian and she broke down in front she of McDonald's? Just, yeah, the, the, the smell is that powerful. It just overwhelmed her. Uh, and no sooner had she finished the last bite of her burger, the song was in her head. The, the aroma brought back memories of roller skating and learning to ride a bike. Very Proustian. And, and uh, Yeah, and a vision of my dad holding the back fender of the tire. And me saying to my dad, you're holding, you're holding, you're holding, right? Then I look back and he wasn't holding and I'd, and I'd fall. <laughs> that's her talking, not you. Yeah, that's her talking. So that whole thing came back to me in a rush at McDonald's. Yeah. And came out with, with this song. Uh, so it was not a deliberate or intentional sexual innuendo. Thank you, McDonald's. <laughs> like they haven't given us enough. <laughs> they haven't given us enough. I still have to try that extra crispy McNuggets thing you were talking about. Yeah, I've already forgotten what that was. Oh. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. And then a lot of connections, a lot of Proustian connections here today. Yeah, and also, I mean, he's 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 not well known, but it, this sort of ties in with you're getting old, and then me getting old. No, no, me. <laughs> Uh, there was a, a a music writer, a British music writer, Neil Bocarney. And I only recently found out about this guy. I mean, he's been writing for decades. You know, he wrote for Melody Maker, a bunch of mm. British uh, magazines and so on. But I, I somehow I, I came across him on Twitter or something. Started following him. Very interesting guy. Um, he passed away a couple weeks ago. Mm. 51 years old. What? Yeah. <clears throat> How did that? Yeah, uh, heart attack. That's yeah. like uh, about ten years ago. I stumbled into this guy I had a blog about young adult literature, mm -hmm. and it was really great. I was like, oh, I'd love to go in and oh, I remember this book when I was a kid, and he he was a, he was a librarian. Mm -hmm. He loved young adult. He was putting together a book about it, and then all of a sudden one day his brother posts. Oh, uh, yeah, gee, uh, I've even forgotten his name. Uh, Carl tripped, broke his ankle last week, Some somehow got infected, a blood clot, boom, he's dead. Oh, my God. And yeah, he was like early 50s, and it's like, yeah. just like that. Goes from like, we go, we're talking about like young adult literature, kids' books we remember from our youth, Brucey and again, I guess that's a theme for today. Uh, and then all of a sudden dead. And like, I didn't even know the guy. Obviously, I never met him. Obviously, right. just a random guy online. And, mm -hmm. and I was bummed. I was for days. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I saw this news about this writer, I was just like, oh, you know, because, yeah, I, I, I was kind of following him pretty yeah. regularly. And uh, he had just put out he does like he was doing like end of the year wrap ups. Yeah. And he'd recommend all these albums I'd never heard of before. And then I'd check them out and they're pretty good. You know, he had really good taste in music. What was his uh, name? Neil Cole Carney with, with K's. K U L K A R N I. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of music bummers, my other favorite podcast out there. Called Let It Roll. Uh, I found it a couple years ago. It is the best slash most definitive podcast I've ever heard about the history of rock and roll. Uh, and then all of a sudden, yesterday, boom! Final episode. Won't be doing it anymore. Totally really? wrong. And this no. is the one. A couple years ago, I talked to the guy about my footnotes idea. And he was all excited about it. I was trying to put together something to have a footnotes podcast. You know, the people we talked about it. Like, is he uh, American? I mean, I've listened to him. I I know you've always been a fan. Oh, yeah. and... okay. is, is he's American? Yeah. What's his name? Can you say his name? 
Nate Wilcox. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the guy. He's in Texas. Oh, okay. Uh, just got like a jukebox and and on the. Uh... No, that I know what one you're thinking of. The oh. guy with the strangest voice in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one too. Except, oh. I gotta say, I he had one the other week or two ago for three hours about Hey Jude. Wow. And I feel like, out of the 180 minutes, maybe two were about the song. <laughs> After yeah. like two hours of buildup, I'm like, we haven't even gotten to the fucking song. Like, what do we? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, that's isn't that called the history of rock in five hundred? Yeah, in five hundred songs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I'm not familiar with the one you're talking about. Then, uh, it's just fantastic. Uh, he had. You ever hear the? Uh, Say the name of it again. You know, what... Let it roll. Let it roll. Okay. And uh, when I first started listening, he he was interviewing. You remember the music critic uh, Ed Ward? Yeah. He yeah. died a couple of years ago, but he would be on there. Okay. Uh, and he grew up, you know, he's from Memphis in the 50s. So he was there, you know, ground zero in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, plus he was a bit of an asshole. So it's kind of fun to listen to. <laughs> uh, but Let It Roll. Uh, and yeah, I had the idea for the footnote series. Tried to get that going. Uh, couldn't get it going. He was excited about it. But uh, yeah, Let It Roll, RIP. How many episodes did he do? Do you know? Oh, must have been a couple hundred. I mean, really? Probably... Yeah. Well, maybe you can check out. I think it's relatively new. Craig Finn. Have you? Yeah. Have you, have you listened to those? Uh, if the guest interests me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, Tom uh, Sharpling was on there uh, recently. Yeah. That doesn't interest me. No. <laughs> no, no, um, no. I listened to the. Um, I, I listen. I, I think I listened to some of that one. Yeah, he's he's. Yeah, if I like the guest, I'll listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you listen to the Tom one? Any thoughts? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was good. I mean, he he went he went a little more personal. You know, he, I mean, he's he's sort of opened up, I guess, since the book. So mm -hmm. he's he he feels a little more comfortable talking about certain subjects that he wasn't talking about before, and um, so. Uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. um i listened I to the listen. patterson hood uh that was the first episode actually yeah um speaking of chatty i, I never be <laughs> he you know i've never really listened to any interviews with patterson hood but i always assumed they'd be very funny um you remember you you were at that continental show when we saw them right no. we, we, uh, you, you didn't go to that show that was when you first when you saw Mariah oh. for the first time. Well, I they played oh. together. Am I wrong? No, no I'm I thinking they, of the Continental Drifters. No, the the Continental venue, uh, the drive by truckers. That was the first time I saw them. Yeah, and it was. I think they were. They only had like the first two records, uh, Gangsta Billy and Pizza Deliverance. Yeah, and there's some funny songs on those those albums. Oh yeah. yeah. And then I, I guess they made this concentrated uh, effort. And, and I remember just, I mean, you know, I had a few beers before the show. Mm -hmm. But I just remember, like, laughing throughout the show. I had, like, a great time. Yeah, the they're a fun band. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. They they were fun. And yet yeah. on, this, on this interview, Patterson Hood is already kind of, like, saying, you know, those were, like, his worst times. <laughs> And I'm like, well, all right. They may have been your worst times. I had a good time. Yeah. I, you know, I thought I enjoyed the shows. I guess there may have been yeah. turmoil, personal and within the band at the time. But I don't know. For for that hour and a half they played, I, I had a great time. Yeah. Um, But I miss the humor in, in their music. You know, they got very serious. Yeah. And, and Craig Finn, I actually saw, I guess they toured together. I mean, I saw them at the horrible uh, airport venue in New York. What's it called? Airport venue. It's just like a horrible venue. Uh, you feel like you're in a, an airplane hangar. Were you there at the record release party? We went to Separation Sunday, me no. with Oak. No. And Robert Criscow, like. Robert Criscow was there? Goes up and like. Elbows me and Ope out of the way. Is <laughs> Seriously, like, oh, yeah. Man. Oh, that's it funny. was the worst show. Uh, I, I like some of the whole city's records, but the, the, live they were just unwatchable. 
that's what happened to me. I mean, when they were touring together, uh, the whole steady and uh, drive by truckers, they were alternating who would headline. Mm -hmm. So the show I went to, um, drive by truckers opened. Mm -hmm. And so I said, all right, well, that's who I wanted to see. I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit of this, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, at a certain, like every song felt like an anthem and mm -hmm. everybody's shouting the lyrics. Was that your experience or? Well, and then like Craig Finn, he, he's he got a guitar, but he's always, he's never playing it. He's always just <laughs> whipping it around his body. And he's, yeah, yeah. I think I noticed this, that. Yeah. The mic is flailing around and it's like, uh -huh. oh, like yeah, this seemed very, I don't know, uh, contrived to me. I don't know. I just didn't believe it. Yeah. And I like well, some of those early records of theirs. But... Yeah, and his singing is, is sort of uh, has a uh, a hectoring, <laughs> like like he's yeah, just like you're... he's like preaching or something. Just like you bet, it's just yeah, like, it's, it's, it's just got that quality to it. It's like oh, it it, it wore me out. I, I yeah, I, I didn't make it to the end. I, I watched, yeah. I and watched I, about I half of they it. They became I... the critics' darlings. Everybody loved them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're still putting out records. I. I met one of them. The bass player was it's like my guitar player's roommate's friend, or there's some connection a hundred years ago. Very nice guys, whichever mm -hmm. ones I met. Super nice. Yeah. But uh, th that live show was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> I never heard about the the Robert Christgau, uh Oh yeah, like elbows. elbows. And, oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty good. I've never seen that guy at any shows. I mean. I kind of okay. like him. I, you know, I, he's recommended a, a lot of good music that I've liked. Some, some I never liked, you know, it's yeah. hit or miss, but for the most part, I thought he was a pretty, yeah. pretty solid critic. I mean, he looked like he was a thousand years old and grouchy. So we were like, <laughs> all right, take the fucking. Yeah. Corner. I mean, he still has a blog and, you know, yeah, I, I think he's getting grouchier as he gets older. But one of the best rock and roll nights I've ever had is when Marah opened for the Truckers. And they had what? never seen the Truckers. And we were hanging out before, and they, Marah, and they start putting together their set list. And I warned them. I was like, uh, you might. Where was this? It was in Philly. Oh, in Philly? I think it was at the TLA in Philly. Did I go to that show? I can't even remember. Jeez, I mean, this is twenty. This is yeah. two thousand three. Yeah, and so I said, I remember, I was like, I said, uh, you might want to just play all your rockers, you know, because <laughs> the truckers are, are they were a great live band. Like you mm -hmm. can't, yeah, you yeah. open it for them. You don't want to go mail it in, and right, yeah. This yeah. is my ballad from the yeah. B side to my yeah. Now they come out so swinging, can, yeah. Come out swinging, yeah. But that's did. the way that's the way Marah was to me. I, I thought right, they were right. always. They were but, consistently you know. rocking and yeah, no lulls. I, I just warned them, come out swinging and don't stop. Which, to your point, isn't different, you know. But uh, and that was one of the greatest nights. I mean, they ripped the roof off the place. Truckers ripped the roof off the place. Uh, of course, then they and Search came back. They did People Who Died. I think that mm -hmm. was the the truckers always did. The truckers to me are always frustrating because. Uh, they're so wordy in their songwriting, and it's like, yeah, it, they never it got... changed the words to fit the melody. They would always fuck up the melody because they had to shoehorn yeah. whatever precious words they. Had. Let me give you a little bit of advice, young Michael. <laughs> never let a great lyric ruin a good song. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a little advice for you, young songwriters out there. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with you. Going and yeah. then they ruin it by trying to, you know, yeah. shuffle in some. Yeah, they're they're very wordy. I I agree with that. Um, you can be wordy, but um, they would always just fuck it up. Ruin and then I th I think they peaked when when Jason Isbell was in the band. Yeah, and I think he's already written off that those years because yeah, he, yeah, he, he was, I, he yeah, was he having a talk. bad time. Yeah, you hear him talk. He's like, I, he was drunk, I was miserable, stupid. Don't even look at those years. Yeah. yeah, everyone else is like, I don't know, I had a great time. <laughs> Paul some... Westerberg telling you, oh, don't, don't listen to any replacement shows. Just listen to mine. It's like, all right, come on now. Mm -hmm. 
I'm glad you wrote, you wrote some great songs with them as well. You yeah, know? I'm glad you're healthy now and you're not a drunk. But boy, were you awesome back then! <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you feel you feel bad saying that, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm glad he's healthy, but uh, he's he's not as interesting now. <laughs> I I try to yeah. listen to those solo records, and I don't know. They, what do you what do you feel? You know, you feel the same little uh, yeah, polished some, uh, like uh, Sue King gratification. Or however you pronounce it, great album. Oh no, no, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about uh, Jason Isbell. Oh, oh God, no, I can't. Uh, did you watch that the uh, documentary of his a year ago? No, I don't think I saw that. No, I'll have to go back. I posted about it. It's like he's obviously the super nice guy. You're rooting for him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this whole. This whole documentary is just like an hour and a half of like, ooh, Jason's got a lot of pressure on him for this new album. And a lot of guys standing around going, a lot of pressure on Jason. Is he going to do it? <laughs> and then his wife is like, a lot of pressure on Jason. Hope we uh -huh. don't break up the marriage. It's like, all right. Well, really? Okay. Now well, now I got to see it. You know, it yeah, sounds like something. Uh, I have to go back and see. I I ripped it to shreds, and I felt bad <laughs> because again, he seems like the nicest guy. Right? I yeah. I don't begrudge. No, I'm pulling for him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yes, I'm pulling for him. Yeah. But some of this thing, this was just so ridiculous, and it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's never like, uh, here's how I wrote the song. Here's how we recorded the song. Here's what made sense or doesn't make sense. It's always some existential. Will the yeah, marriage but... survive? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's like I, I, I'll, I'll I'll send the link to you uh, to uh -huh. my parent, uh, <laughs> post about it. So. No, I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Um, but I saw him. I think one of his first shows. I think were you at that Central Park show with Charlie Daniels? No. It was. It, uh, I'm sure I've told Char you what Charlie Daniels opened for Charlie him? Daniels opened for the truckers and it was it was a couple months after 9-11 wow and uh, that's we're, so weird. we're standing there while Charlie's going through a set and we're all thinking the same thing will you please just fucking play Devil Went Down to Georgia <laughs> uh he'd play a song and then Let's... he'd go in this weird thing I don't know about y'all but I'm getting sick and tired of people flying airplanes into my buildings oh all like, right yeah Okay, Charlie. Like we're all on. Oh, those were heavy MP. times. Those were heavy times. I mean, and, oh, and like some girl had gotten kidnapped, was in the news. So they play a song. I don't know about y'all. I'm not crazy about strangers coming up, taking away child. We're all looking at like. All right. Yeah. Okay, Charlie. Same team, I guess. We're all. He's he's reading the newspaper. Good for yeah. him. What did you expect? Somebody's gonna <laughs> be. And so yeah, it finally plays. Uh, finally plays that one down to Georgia. And uh, yeah, and then Isbell comes on. Oh, the truckers come on with Isbell. He looked like he was 15. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess he was 19. And I think it was one of his first shows. He looked like a baby. And, yeah. and they were fantastic. Mm -hmm. I don't know about y'all. I'm getting tired of people <laughs> coming up, taking their babies, walking away with them. <laughs> like, I don't know, Charlie. We, we're loving it. Uh huh. We're uh -huh. big fans. Uh huh. Sorry, Sorry Charlie. Is that a Southern? Okay. Now, now, was it really a baby? Or was it like a teenager or uh... like a young girl? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't call me. Don't call me out on my bullshit. But man. isn't that a sub? No, no. I'm. I, you know, I was curious because I've heard Southern people, you know, just calling like grown daughters like my baby. You know, it's like, do they, do they hold on to the baby for longer than say in in the north or? <laughs> am I, I don't off know what you're trying to do. Am I off like... base here? Uh, we have a duty to half of this country. <laughs> uh, no, I think I remember. What do, it was what like do you think? Let, let me know in the comments. Is that a thing or is it just me? It, it, it is a southern thing to, you know, sugar pie and sweetie pie uh -huh. your kids until they're 50. Uh, this one, I think it was like some young girl, like a uh -huh. kid. Okay. I don't know about y'all. I'm tired of people kidnapping children. I don't know, Charlie. We're still pretty cool with it. <laughs> Play the fucking song. <laughs> Yeah, well, those were heavy times. I guess people were still dealing yeah, with it. We all did we start talking about this because I feel like there's this blob of time that's not defined in my memory, and I'm having a hard time going back to it. 
Uh, plus, you get depressed because that, that time was right before cameras were ubiquitous. So, like, nothing is caught on camera. Like at the Nest. All those times were right before everybody's walking around with cameras on their phone. Mm -hmm. All right. True. Yeah. So, so, I don't know. The Sopranos and the Curb thing got me thinking about all that. So. You got me thinking about... <laughs> Check it out, man. <laughs> P.F. Chang's. We're still, we're still in the frozen aisle, people. The good stuff. Well, you did. P.F. Chang's. I went for chicken lo mein. What did you get? I got the same as last week, except pork instead of chicken. Oh. And you told me it was chicken and pork. It would have been the exact same gray <laughs> meat. So uh -huh. everything I said last week just applied to this week. Gray meat with some shitty sauce on curiously constructed plastic containers where they put all their research and development. But the P.F. Chang's, that's the good shit. Let's see that cover again. Well, you didn't uh, have P.F. Chang's last week. Yeah. It, uh, I have to say, I love how they have the chopsticks on the front cover. Like only 430 calories. So, I mean, yeah, that's kind of like who's digging into the frozen P.F. Chang's. <laughs> With, with the chopsticks, chopsticks. Uh -huh. come on yeah false advertising there pf um when it when i uh unpacked it it looked uh pretty anemic i'm like where's the sauce i mean it looked like there was like no sauce involved no sauce uh, no thanks and it was five minutes in the microwave i still don't know what my wattage is uh there is a note about the wattage see um, always <laughs> always and uh nobody had anything to say in the comments about high or low microwave because yeah i assume everybody is as confused as we are yeah but um five minutes uh, uh four to five and a half so there's a broad range um, all right well we don't need to put the people totally <laughs> to sleep but but it, it did come to life after the microwaving. Uh, again, I felt odd leaving the plastic on top. No yeah. venting, no venting, but no no uh, message saying to leave it as it is either. So I just left it. Uh, um, sometimes food bursts in the in the microwave and it makes a mess, you know. Right. Even something as simple as oatmeal, I've had you know, unless I put like a little loose cover on it, the thing splatter what, all over what the place are you doing the oatmeal or microwave to make it explode <laughs> i don't know how long are you leaving it in there uh, it's a minute a minute and a half whatever huh. you know but um anyway so yes <laughs> uh, fortunately there was no explosions uh the, the, the plastic didn't melt into the dish <laughs> it, it came off easily and then I uh, started eating it. I, well, you got to mix it up a little bit. What did you have last week? Sesame chicken? I had, yeah, yeah, healthy choice. Oh, healthy sesame choice. chicken. Yeah, yeah. I'll say this. This is definitely more flavorful. But what happened is, you know, I, I even had, when I saw what it looked like frozen, I had some packets of soy uh, soy sauce ready to go. Ooh. I'm like, I, I thought it was going to be, you know, anemic. Breaking case, break glass in case I'm of like, emergency. I'm like, let's keep the soy ha soy sauce handy because this dish doesn't look so great frozen. Yeah. Then it came out, and I stir it up, and it is the most soy sauce I think I've had in a meal yet. <laughs> really? If you want, if you love soy sauce, this is the one to get because P.F. Chang knows what they're doing. P.F. Chang doesn't want people to say, "Oh, there's no flavor." This thing. It's yeah. too much flavor and it's soy sauce. Too much soy sauce. Yeah, it was just too much. Uh, um, I mean, I I ate it. Yeah. <laughs> P.S. I ate it. Uh, yes, I ate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. P.F. If you're listening, I ate it. Uh, that savory soy sauce was uh, a bit much, though. Um. And then there was a hunk of cabbage I got right at the end. I thought I thought it was a piece of chicken. And then I got surprised. Hey, you thought that was chicken? That was just a chunk of cabbage. That is tragic. Wake, wake, 
waiting to burst into your mouth. I thought it was chicken, but it was ended up cabbage. <laughs> That's your big country western hit. <laughs> I thought I was eating chicken, but I was eating cabbage. So what about yourself? You're not... Uh... Well, first of all, I'd like to get some P.F. Chang's. I need to order it because it does seem higher level, even though P.F. Chang is only my second favorite P.F. After, of course, P.F. Sloan, <laughs> who wrote a couple of little hits called Eve of Destruction uh -huh. and Where Were You When I Needed You. Mm -hmm. Ever heard of those two little hits? Yeah, I've heard of them. You want to sing those? No, that's your job. Uh, so, no, like I said, uh, I didn't even take a picture of it. It's the exact same shit as I ate last week, except pork. <laughs> And I don't know why they even call them different names, chicken, pork, same thing. So, uh, one of my friends saw the photo of your uh, your dish last week, and he he was, he, was, he thought it looked good. I'm like Ooh. really? I'm like, oh, again, it was. I shouldn't say. I mean, I ate it. It, it unlike a lot of dishes I've been through this mm -hmm. year, it it was edible, but it just tasteless, and there's nothing there. There's like eight pieces of rice. And again, I'm fascinated by the this multi-tier plastic container they have. <laughs> I'm like, instead of that, could you have just thrown in some more rice? The high-tech. Uh, yeah, there's like four dish. sheets of rice, mm -hmm. but like the most high-tech plate <laughs> contraption ever. So. I'm like, you know, uh -huh. but, uh -huh. but I should I should have remembered to get some, uh, some P.F. Chang, although... I'm all I'm all pizza this week. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> oh, so you're gonna skip out next week? I mean, uh, you know what? Even though I'm doing pizza all week, I'll, I'll let you pass if if you if you're like deep in the th in this thing. Yeah, I I give you a pass for next week. You know, you. but I do want to try the pineapple pineapple pizza. Root you on. I will try that. But yeah, the pizza thing, it's gonna be tough. Did you eat this uh, microwave dish in, in your office or? No, at home. Oh, at home. Okay. Yeah. I got it at the same time last week as I did the other one. Because I tossed it last night. I was curious what you, maybe your coworkers responding to the smell. It, was there a strong smell or? I keep it on the down low. Whenever I order here, I, I eat it down in the cafeteria, bro. I'm not bringing that garbage up here. <laughs> keep, my, my cube. Keeping your Chinese takeout on the down low. I can't do that to these people. Uh -huh. they work too hard all week. They can't be smelling that shit. Well, the TikTokers are at it again. Have you heard of the ketchup challenge? Well, I made a TikTok video last week, and you couldn't even make it through it. So, <laughs> did it go up what on challenge? TikTok? Or huh? did, it, did it go up on TikTok, or is it, it just went up on uh, Instagram? No, it didn't go up on TikTok. <laughs> is that why you didn't bother watching it? Yeah, I once or did I did heard... you watch your part and then the second you stopped talking, you just no, just... once once I heard there were funny voices involved, I was like, Oh, I don't know. Oh. It was a uh all right. A decision I would have uh note to self, Mike to pers funny persuade you, persuade you again. Self. I mean, I'm glad you, you you had some fun with the uh yeah, with the audio. You learned okay. a, you learned something new. I no learned trick. how to do funny voices for. Did Michael. you watch a uh, YouTube tutorial, or <laughs> no. you know, you know about changing the speed of voices? No, I just dicked around with it, and then after about two hours, it's locked in. So <laughs> two hours. I don't know. Two hours is more than dicking around, as as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's never enough for you, so <laughs> that's fair. Anyway, so, there's there's a, a ketchup challenge out there in the nope. world. Not doing that. You 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 are you know what this is? I mean, I hate ketchup, so I'm not okay. <laughs> Unless it's how much ketchup can you throw out the garbage? Well, listen to what this thing is. So people, and we're we're talking mostly young people. I haven't seen older people doing this. So young people in relationships, uh oh, are taking a bottle of ketchup. Pause for dramatic effect, and just. <laughs> I can't do it. Let and just it. splattering it across a counter. Just making a mess on a counter with ketchup. And then they're demanding 
that their boyfriend clean it up. And it's supposed to be some sort of test to see whether their boyfriends are capable of cleaning ketchup off the counter. Capable? Yeah. Capable as opposed to uh, walking out to the car after she pulls this nonsense. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I read this article, and not once does does one of the people, well, I guess those tic, those videos don't make it to TikTok. Wasn't there used to be an old, I mean, I, I hate to be like old-timey with the sayings, you make the mess, you clean the mess, right? Wasn't that a saying? Right. Yeah. Why doesn't that prevail anymore? So does the boyfriend know it? Does the girl say, I'm about to test you. I'm going to throw ketchup all over this counter and see if you'll clean it up? Yeah. Like, he's surprised. Right. No, no, he's he's sort of, I guess, game for it. You know? And they, and they all... And and the, the, the thing, what made this worthy is that, like, apparently there's... 80 different ways to clean up ketchup off a counter that guys will think of stupid ways of doing it. Oh, you know? so the point you, isn't whether they're willing to do it. Their point is how they'll do it. Right. What's the most interesting way? Well, one guy actually did it with his hands. He kind of just scooped it all together. Sorry, girls. He's taken. <laughs> but that's it, you know. Um, and then, of course, the people are commenting on this and, you know, I mean, some guys, yeah, they, they they grabbed napkins and they just made a made the mess worse, spreading it all over the counter, because that's not the way to do it. What's the way to do it? What would you do? Well, I'd get like, yeah, I'd get paper towels, not napkins. Napkins, you know, will just make it messy. It's not you need you need a paper towel. Oh. So yeah, paper towel or a handy wipe. It's not that difficult. <laughs> that's so amazing. you don't even have to be creative. Yeah. You just need to remember, hey, somebody give me some paper towels. But my initial response would be, you made the mess. You clean it up. <laughs> and then you walk out. <laughs> you walk out, yeah. I would look down. That's at old school. Catch up everywhere, strewn about, and I'd be like, I think it's time we saw other people. Mm -hmm. I want to take a break. <laughs> and I hate catch up anyway. Yeah. Diners must love this. Uh, you know, that's a real dick move. All you're doing is costing the diners, you know, that's just wasted ketchup. Well, I mean, they're doing this in, in their homes. Uh, I, I didn't see it taking uh, place. I, yeah, I didn't say see it taking place in, in public uh, restaurants. Oh, I assumed it was like at a diner. No, it's, it's in their own homes. They're doing it at home. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Can't people just film themselves having weird sex like normal people <laughs> anymore instead of this? Uh -huh. Didn't people used to do cool stuff? I will not be doing the ketchup challenge. So uh, we're going to go from ketchup to hamburgers. Uh, did you see the story about uh, there was a tourist, U.S. tourist in um, Toronto? I know we've got some Canadian uh, listeners out there. This is especially for you. Oh, <laughs> this story. I'm trying to get some international food news. International uh, flavor. On the show. A tourist, uh, he went to a restaurant in Toronto and he ordered a hamburger medium, which I guess is unusual. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to get a steak medium, but to get a burger medium, it's, you know, it's a little tricky, right? I mean, I, I never get a medium. Usually you don't even have to say, you don't say anything. Just give me a hamburger. At a real restaurant, yeah. What do you say? You say? Medium rare. You say medium rare. Yeah. Really? Okay. I mean, like at Burger King, they don't ask, but like at a real restaurant, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, this tourist was surprised to get a release form when he received his, his burger. Um, I guess they're worried about lawsuits if he gets sick eating a medium burger. Huh. What was the place? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I, I don't have the name of the restaurant. It was in Toronto. All right. Got it. Um, but uh, this is maybe something new. You order a meal and then you get a release form. <laughs> hey, so it wasn't even like, like they do that at like the heart attack diner. Uh-huh. This well, is a normal place. Yeah. Well, well, I think the timing of the release form was what I I disagree with. 
you know, uh, I could see when he ordered it that way that they said, well, you know, just give him the story up front. But they they presented the release form when they presented the burger. Which made him a little leery of eating the burger and he yeah. he walked out. <laughs> yeah. Why would you eat a burger once you're presented with that? Unless it's like a comical thing, like the heart attack diner. Yeah. That's all suspicious. Yeah. But uh, maybe this is a, a trend of the future we're we're going to see, you know. Everybody worried about lawsuits. Every time you leave the house, you got to sign something. I'm not going to sue everybody <laughs> I run into. Um, McDonald's is always in the news. They had a story where uh, a young lady bought a McFlurry. Uh -oh. um, when she got to the bottom of the McFlurry, she pulled a large plastic bag. <laughs> Out of the cup. Did you see that video? Mm -mm. And it was a substantial. It, it almost looked like a magic trick, you know, where they're pulling a handkerchief that's just yeah. wound end. She pulled a plastic bag out of the bottom of this McFlurry. I guess she, it, you know, she was unaware that it was there until the very end. And then she got her uh, plastic bag, free, free plastic bag. <laughs> what was in the plastic bag? No, it was just empty. There was nothing in oh. it. But, uh, Disappointing. I mean, she could have washed it off and took it home, and she's got a free plastic bag. <laughs> oh, good for her. A free used plastic bag. Is she suing them? Like well, that? you know, somebody in the video, is, yeah, is uh, making oh. a crack about suing, and of course, yeah, good luck with all of those lawsuits. You know what? You've inspired me. There's a McDonald's near my train stop. I think I might get some Mickey D's. On the way home tonight. What do you think of that? <laughs> Since I'm going to be eating nothing but pizza for a week. I, I put that uh, thought in your head. Maybe huh? I'll try those extra crispy McNuggets. <laughs> um, I was hoping something grotesque would be in the plastic bag when she pulled it out. No, no. Uh, are you interested in the Space Dunk Oreos contest? How do I not know any of this shit? I'm online all day, every day. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm digging for this, this stuff. The space it's, Oreo thing. It's, it's not important news. It's just, uh, well, it's, it's a contest. You, you, I guess you, you send something in, and they're gonna set, set you up for a trip. It's not uh, Elon Musk's or, uh, uh, actually, I don't think you, you get. You oh, just, you mean outer space? Yeah, outer space. Yeah. So Oreo? yeah, you can win a you can win a flight in this. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't go as high where uh, gravity uh, you're yeah. without gravity. Yeah. I get. I guess you're you're right at the cusp of that though. Right. And, well, that's what all uh, those rich fuckers do. They go up <laughs> and they come right back down. So it's like, yeah. So it's yeah. It's along those lines. So they've got this cookie space dunk Oreos. It's got a blue and pink cream. And Pop Rocks, you know. Pop Rocks? Yeah. You must have loved Pop Rocks back in your day. No, I, I thought, you know, that came in towards the end of my childhood, and I thought it was just, it was like a novelty, and it didn't really add anything to the experience. It, it's, yeah. The first time you do it, it's kind of, oh, it's popping. <laughs> the first time you saw Pop Rocks, did you hear a narrator's voice in your head? And that's when I said goodbye to my childhood. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. It was it was about that time, you know. That's when I knew childhood was time hard. to stop eating candy and grow up, save your teeth. You were thirty eight years old. I was thirty eight years old. Yes, I think I I was about that age. You know who would do the catch up challenge though, because he loves catch up. Friend of the show, Waddy. <laughs> As other friend of the show, <laughs> Will would say, the most handsome man in the world. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know how he's so handsome when he eats that much ketchup. He loves ketchup. <laughs> it's in Midwestern. It's a Midwestern. Uh -huh. Already mm -hmm. Midwestern stock. Yeah. They like ranch and ketchup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't add anything to that. Yeah. I like I like ketchup in moderation. Some people overdo it. Uh, don't like... Uh, Ketchup on hot dogs? They say you like ketchup on hot dogs? No. Oh, okay. Not a child. <laughs> I'll tell you what I don't like. Uh-huh. 
Can you? I, I feel like I'm bitching a lot about getting older all of a sudden. Well, that's you know, I, I've said one of the themes of this show is the deterioration of the human body. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Uh, I found myself today bitching and moaning. Can you believe it's already February, basically? Yeah. Like you feel like, all right, it's just 2024. We're just getting started with the year. You'd probably make a bad joke about I'm still signing my checks 2023. It would all mm -hmm. pretend to laugh. Uh -huh. And it's already not only 2024, we're already a 12th of a way through it. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? It's uh, time flies, as the expression goes. I, I can't. Yeah, I agree with you. It does seem to go faster, whether that has anything to do with my age. Possible. Um, like I said, my social life is uh, slightly better than, say, Howard Hughes. Nice. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, eating your own toenails. <laughs> No, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not uh, storing my uh, urine in bottles. Wasn't that one of his things? Um, well, there's still time, Mike. <laughs> was, wasn't that, was that chronicled in uh, Williamsburg Rats, or was that just... Uh, oh, mean, that was when I, w or the character was laid up because of his back, and he had to try to piss in a <laughs> bottle, and it didn't go well. Uh-huh. I remember somebody reading that. I, I like when you loud. say you say the character in the book. Right. It's <laughs> gotta keep some mystery for the fans, Mike. <laughs> I remember somebody reading out that passage aloud on yeah. the what episode. Uh, that uh, that was one of the handful laugh out loud moments reading. I mean, you don't have too many of those, right? You 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 read and you, you know, you read the funny writers and stuff, and even those writers, oh. you don't really get to the point of laughing out loud. Right, you know, you can you 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 get that it's funny. Any 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 other moment? Do you have any uh, reading experiences that you remember laughing out loud? Only during Williamsburg Rats. That's the only time. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay, that could be a, a selling point. You know, the only book that will make you laugh out loud. I mean, if it could make you laugh out loud a couple yeah. times, yeah, yeah, I feel pretty good. I'm not an yeah, I'm not an easy laugher. Um. I do need to break down and finally do the fucking uh, audio book. Coming up on 10 years next year. Oh, okay. So I should probably do it. Can I read that chapter? You know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I should do? I don't know if anybody else has ever done it. Hit us up in the comments if you have. Uh, because of the uniqueness of the book and the way that it's true, not true, maybe I should read it. <laughs> But then I like, do a director's cut where I read it and then I go through the chapter. This is bullshit. This is funny. This is true. Oh, commentary. Commentary. What do you think of that? Do people a do book, A book commentary. Is that a thing? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. I, don't know. <laughs> I know there's film commentaries. Right. Like why wouldn't, would it be cool if I did a director's cut of my book? Like you get the audio book, you read it, but then you get my talking about it. The making of... Right. The writing of, or e even as I re I read the chapter and then I go, that didn't happen. That did happen. <laughs> uh, this sucks as I'm reading it now. Well, whatever you know, just any commentary. But that would spoil the mystery you were just alluding to earlier. Y you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I could do commentary without spoiling the mystery. You're right about that. Uh -huh. What do yeah. you think about that? Is that something people do? Um... Or is that me just wanting to hear more of my own voice? It could be interesting, but you know, uh, it could be just sort of a a bonus supplement right. for the for the audio book people. That's what I mean. Like you have, if you want just the regular audio book, you have the audio book, right? And then if you want, you can also have this extra director. Yeah, you could call uh, it the writing of Williamsburg Rats. Right, like not maybe a give a little cut. color of yeah. what your life was like at the time writing the right. book. Yeah, okay, that'd be fun, right? Yeah, it would be. I I've never uh, heard of everybody do that. I I don't listen to a lot of audiobooks or none. But I think that's a good <laughs> idea, right? Yeah, I can't get with the audiobook thing. People swear by them though. People I love mean, them. Yeah. Pe people I guess who have long commutes in cars love them, you know. Yeah. Uh I've been given some audiobooks. I have them. I've never felt that 
the urge to put it in there and start spinning those CDs. Our, our audience should know that for the right price, I will call them up and personally read my books to them. <laughs> for the right price. Yeah. How long should this supplemental uh, thing be? I'm thinking like not very long. Just kind of give a little, you know, color for when it was written. So we haven't even done it yet and you're already squelching <laughs> the creativity? Well, I'm thinking, you know, 15 minutes, right? For the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to make Maybe it like a, a minute or two each chapter. That's all. You don't have to make it a marathon, you know. Right. I, I liked it when I didn't even I haven't even done it yet, and you're already crushing it. <laughs> crushing it. Already shitting I'm, on. I'm it. Just should, before, it really be, should you really before, speak out loud when you're doing? Before this? you start or? reading uh, every entry in your blog, you know, during. Oh, that that's period. an idea. You want to do that? <laughs> How long would that take? <laughs> If you put every word on Xmas time, it would wrap around the sun. Uh -huh. eight yeah. All right. I think it's a good idea. I'm interested to see if anybody else has an experience with that for audiobooks. Okay. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, it'd be cool if, uh, you know, I just invented it, but, you know. I like uh, we've been getting more comments. Uh, I appreciate that. Your uh, your input is important to us, and we want to uh, do the best show possible. <laughs> the best show? <laughs> Really, Mike? You no, know, the best. Uh, you know, we. Uh, you saw some promotional materials I sent along to you today. Uh, yes. a, a young young man stepped forward. He's a graphic artist. Uh, I'm going to try and get that out there to the public. Uh, I appreciate his efforts. Did you see the marketing? Look for that soon. What's that? The marketing efforts my team has done. Young man. Showing off his egg food what t-shirt on Instagram? I didn't see that. Friend of the show, Josh. Uh -huh. Proudly wearing his egg food what t-shirt. Did, Did you, you retweet it? I didn't I didn't see it. I put it on Insta. I oh. it on Insta. Insta. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so okay. maybe, you know. I missed it. We get we get he's a he's a fan of the show. He actually listens to it. Josh, <laughs> thanks for listening. Yeah. Uh so yeah, get some of these. These young, exciting, vibrant people out there. Yeah, well, we got to get the young people. That's why, to... you know, I talk about TikTok every week. <laughs> yeah, you do talk about TikTok a lot. <laughs> I want to get those young people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm doing my part. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Well, again, since we were in the frozen food section, uh, they don't come with... Uh... Fortune cookies. Fortune cookies at all, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm backed up with fortune cookies. You want you want to hear one just yeah. for old time's sake? Yeah. <laughs> old time's sake. <laughs> People like the crinkling of the plastic as I open yeah. it. It's ASMR is that what they call it? Yeah, they like sounds. And crinkle, crinkle. It relaxes them. Yeah, they fall asleep. I'm falling asleep right now. People yeah. are falling asleep as I probably yes. Uh, oh yeah. And there you go. This is after this particular show. It's it's fitting. The best times of your life have not yet been lived. That's nice. Very optimistic. All right. <laughs> That's actually a fortune too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at you. Look at me. Yeah. Let's hope it's true. Yeah. I don't I don't believe I don't, it. I don't think anybody's <laughs> gonna accuse us of this being our pinnacle. Believe it. No. Uh-huh. I don't think we're in any danger of that. So no. That's good. So that about does it. Uh I want to thank everybody for listening. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. The numbers are going up. The analytics are great. The uh, analytics are good. We'll keep doing it as long as there's demand. Supply and demand. That's Supply how demand. It yeah. Thanks everybody. Put the comments in there. Like Mike said, subscribe, like, whatever, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Oh, now you ruined it. <laughs> uh huh. We're still here. We're still. Uh, uh, I think you're still recording, bro. <laughs> don't say. Don't say nothing crazy. It's being recorded. Okay. <laughs>